All right, anyone brave enough to read theirs aloud? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hardest movie monologues to perform. Once upon a time. Let me tell you the story of right hand, left hand. It's a tale of good and evil. Something funny? For this list, we'll be looking at the speeches that made us laugh, cry, and cower in fear due to the performer's profound and impressive commitment to the text. Before we get started, drop us a comment and let us know if your favorite monologue made the list. Number 10. I'm so mad I don't know what to do. Steel Magnolias. This dramedy is an adaptation of a play by Robert Harling about the tight-knit bond between a group of friends living in the South. In a startling turn of events, Julia Roberts' character Shelby passes away due to complications from diabetes, causing her mother, Emlyn, played by Sally Field, to have an emotional breakdown at the funeral. Oh, God! I'm so mad I don't know what to do! I want to know why. I want to know why Shelby's life is over. Field fuels all her energy into capturing the unfathomable nature of grief and the rage that it carries. I don't think I can take this. I don't think I can take this. I just want to hit somebody till they feel as bad as I do. I just want to hit something. I want to hit it on. Like a pendulum of emotion, she goes from weeping to yelling to finally laughing. For this moment, she takes home a gold medal for emotional gymnastics. And I was there when she drifted out. It was the most precious moment of my life. Number 9. You Can't Handle the Truth. A Few Good Men. A couple of years after Aaron Sorkin's play made its Broadway debut in 1989, Hollywood came knocking and adapted A Few Good Men for the screen. With a star-studded cast, including Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson, and Demi Moore, the story revolves around a military murder trial and the ethical and moral stakes of all the parties involved. You have the luxury of not knowing what I know, that Santiago's death while tragic probably saved lives, and my existence while grotesque and incomprehensible to you saves lives. In one of the most tense scenes, Cruz is cross-examining Nicholson's character and doing everything in his power to uncover the truth behind the crime. Nicholson goes into a speech about how ugly the truth can be. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom that I provide and then questions the manner in which I provide it. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. The text practically leaps off the page and into the pop culture hall of fame as one of the most quotable movie lines of all time. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Number 8. Your Move Chief, Goodwill Hunting. As one of the most beloved and impactful performers of all time, Robin Williams' performance in this late 90s hit is one of his best. I stayed up half the night thinking about it. Something occurred to me. I fell into a deep, peaceful sleep. The award-winning screenplay about a math genius and his therapist is full of touching and thoughtful moments, including this one, where Williams' Sean explains to Matt Damon's Will that he knows nothing about life. You don't know about real loss, because that only occurs when you love something more than you love yourself. I doubt you've ever dared to love anybody that much. It's not full of rage or sadness or over-the-top dramatics, but Robin's focus and directness is undeniable. It's a testament to Damon and Ben Affleck's writing skills and Williams' decades of experience that proves collaboration is the backbone of art. But you don't want to do that, do you, sport? You're terrified of what you might say. You move, Chief. Number 7. Tethered Together. Us. This monologue can only be described as spine-chilling. There was a girl, and the girl had a shadow. The two were connected, tethered together. In Jordan Peele's second horror feature, Us, audiences are invited to witness a family's beach trip go off the rails when their mysterious look-alike suddenly appear to wreak havoc. 
Oscar winner Lupita Nyong'o pulls double duty as Adelaide and her doppelganger Red. After Red and her family, referred to as the Tethered, break into the family's vacation home, she details a story about a young happy girl whose shadow lives painfully in the dark. The girl met a handsome prince and fell in love with the shadow. At that same time, met Abraham. Nyong'o created a signature speech pattern for Red, basing it off spasmodic dysphonia, a medical condition that causes vocal spasms. There are many disturbing scenes in the film, but this one stands out and stays with you long after it's over. The shadow hated the girl so much for so long, until one day the shadow realized she was being tested. My God. Number 6. My Heart Was Broken, Manchester by the Sea Kenneth Lonergan's mid-2010 script is an emotionally heavy story about bereavement that's critically acclaimed for its authenticity. My heart was broken. It's always gonna be broken. But I know yours is broken, too. In one of the film's most poignant scenes, Michelle Williams' character Randy runs into her ex-husband Lee. It's the first time the former spouses have seen each other since their divorce, which resulted from Lee accidentally causing a fire that claimed the lives of their children. Randy explains that her permanently broken heart caused her to say unspeakable things. I don't want to torture you. You're not, you're not torturing me. I just want to tell you that I was wrong. No, no. no. Her speech, filled with unfinished sentences and scattered thoughts, ends with her confessing that she loves him. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Oh, you can say that. <laughs> it's just... I'm, it's, I'm sorry, I've gotta go. It's a moment that is about as real and raw as it gets. Number 5. There Is No Bathroom For Me – Hidden Figures There's no bathroom for me here. In this Oscar-nominated film, Taraji P. Henson plays real-life mathematician Katherine Johnson who played a vital role during the early years of the U.S. space program. On any given day, I analyze the manometer levels for air displacement, friction, and velocity, and compute over 10,000 calculations by cosine, square root, and lately analytic geometry by hand. At one point in the film, her boss, played by Kevin Costner, publicly berates her for disappearing during working hours. She reveals to him that due to segregation, the only washroom she can use is half a mile away. Did you know that? I have to walk to Timbuktu just to relieve myself. And I can't use one of the handy bikes. It's one of the most memorable moments of the film due to Henson's command and groundedness. Every word she speaks is heard loud and clear with such force and dedication that it's not just a monologue, it's a statement. And I work like a dog, day and night, living off a of coffee from a pot none of you want to touch! Number 4. You Pretentious – The Social Network As one of modern cinema's most prolific screenwriters, Aaron Sorkin has become well-known for his melodic and fiery, fast-paced dialogue. In his script for 2010's The Social Network, a film that chronicles the origins of social media titan Facebook and its founder Mark Zuckerberg, his writing is at its best. Yeah, what is this? Well, uh, as you know, we had some new investors that have come What in. is this? When Zuckerberg's ex-best friend and partner Eduardo, played by Andrew Garfield, finds out he's been screwed out of his contract, a confrontation goes down. It's an angry, impassioned, and heartbreaking snapshot of a friendship going down in flames. Sorry, my Pradas and the cleaners! Along with my hoodie and my you flip-flops, you pretentious douchebag! Garfield manages to use physicality to accompany Sorkin's composition in such an effective way that it's hard to shake off. I like sitting next to you, Sean. It makes me look so tough. Number 3. I'm So Sick of It – Little Women if I was a girl in a book, this would all be so easy. Just give up the world happily. Greta Gerwig's 2019 Little Women adaptation was a masterful retelling of the beloved Louisa May Alcott novel. Her screenplay fleshes out the exploration of feminism in the source material, and features one of contemporary cinema's most insightful monologues to date. Women, they... They have minds. And they have souls, as well as just hearts. 
and they've got ambition and they've got talent as well as just beauty. In this scene, Saoirse Ronan as Joe March taps into conflict over the complexity of wanting to be independent and also loved. And I'm so sick of people saying that, that love is just all a woman is fit for. I'm so sick of it. But I'm, I'm so lonely. The monologue is concise, delivered with such believability that it's hard to believe it's all memorized. Between Gerwig's text and Ronan's performance, it's become one of the most memorable moments in the film. Number 2. I'll Show You Out of Order – Scent of a Woman From the Godfather trilogy to Scarface, Al Pacino has built himself an illustrious career by going for roles that are demanding and always pose a challenge. Sir, you're out of order. I don't order. I show you out of order. You don't know what that all is, Mr. Trask. In his Academy Award-winning turn as Lieutenant Colonel Frank Slade, Pacino stars alongside a young Chris O'Donnell as a prep school student who becomes an assistant to Slade, a military vet who was blind and an alcoholic. Over the course of the movie, they form a bond that leads up to this pivotal moment when Frank has to defend his new confidant. You think you're merely sending this splendid foot soldier back home to Argonne with his tail between his legs, but I say you are executing his soul! It's a show-stopping monologue that is chock-full of so many quotable lines that every viewing of it deserves a standing ovation. And that, my friends, is called integrity. That's called courage. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Poem – 10 Things I Hate About You Julia Stiles performs this relatable and deep monologue through a poem. I hate it when you're not around and the fact that you didn't call. <laughs> but mostly I hate the way I don't hate you. Not even close. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. God Didn't Show Up – Marriage Story Laura Dern delivers this smart monologue about society's expectations of women. God is the father and God didn't show up. So you have to be perfect and Charlie can be a up and it doesn't matter. Makes Tomorrow All Right, Requiem for a Dream. Ellen Burstyn's character explains her addiction to her son in this heart-wrenching speech. It's a reason to lose weight, to fit in a red dress. It's a reason to smile. It makes tomorrow all right. Let me tell you a story of right hand, left hand, do the right thing. Spoken by Radio Rahim, inspired by Charles Lawton's The Night of the Hunter. The story of life is this. Static. One hand is always fighting the other hand. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. 18 Years of My Life – Fences One of the most prolific playwrights of all time, August Wilson, created a body of work that captured race in America and the lives of the working class. You're always talking about what you give and what you don't have to give. But you take too, Troy. You take and don't even know nobody's given. After wrapping up the Broadway revival of Wilson's Fences, Denzel Washington and Viola Davis reprised their roles as married couple Troy and Rose for the Washington-directed screen adaptation. This gut-wrenching monologue details Rose confessing that her loyalty and dedication to her husband Troy caused her to miss out on pursuing her own hopes and aspirations. I gave 18 years of my life to stand in the same spot as you! Don't you think I ever wanted other things? Don't you think I had dreams and hopes? What about my life? What about me? The scene is full of vivid imagery and metaphors that make the heartbreaking sequence absolutely soul-crushing and unmasks the hardships that married life can bring. I planted a seed and watched a braid over. I planted myself inside you and waited to bloom. It didn't take me no 18 years to realize the soil was hard and rocky and it was never gonna bloom. Viola earned the Academy Award for this role, and it's no wonder, considering this performance is pure perfection. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.